Victor Burton here on behalf of the Australian Leadership Project. I was delighted to catch up with Tim Richardson, the Victorian Member of Parliament for the seat of Morty Alec, and the youngest MP in the Victorian Parliament. And I was able to talk to him about Australian leadership. Would you tell us, what are your favourite stories of Australian leadership? One of my favourite stories in being a, a, a younger MP uh, and seeing an example of Australian leadership was when uh, the then Prime Minister, Kevin Rudd, uh, made an apology to the stolen generation. I think that was a, a significant time in reconciliation with our Indigenous communities. And it was a time, and it, and it was a, a period where there was great debate about what uh, saying sorry and, uh, and, and really uh, you know, fessing up for some of the, the challenges of the past would mean. It was a powerful moment, it was an emotive motor moment, and uh, it's something that stuck with me as someone who was young and just going through out of high school, uh, to see that leadership and to see what that meant for Australia and quite a young nation still, uh, I thought that was a pretty powerful example of Australian leadership. So what do you see as the unique qualities of Australian leadership? Well, I think the, some of the unique qualities are our, our down-to-earth nature, our self-effacing uh, style, um, how personable we can be. Um, and uh, an example, I think, that transcends some generations is uh, former Prime Minister Bob Hawke and someone who I look up to, and being a younger um, uh, person as well, to have my generation know who he is, uh, that larrikinism, the fact that he's uh, you know, not too good, he hasn't got that uh, aura about him, but being so impressive as well. And I love that, that, that nature of leadership where you can be one of, one of the people who's in the cricket crowd, uh, but also someone who for a lot of the time led our country. And I love that, that part of Australian leadership where you, know, you can pass Andrew Forrest in the street or you can pass Bob Hawke in the street um, or Julia Gillard as former Prime Ministers and uh, they're just like anyone else and you can engage with them and talk to them. So that down-to-earth spirit, there's not that tall, tall poppy uh, syndrome that people check themselves, a self-deprecating style, and that humour, I think, are some of those qualities that people attach to and, and people love about Australian leadership, but also, as well, that grit and hard work and uh, also the, the, the desire to go further and to really push ourselves beyond our boundaries, despite being such a, a, a significant economy that we're still a relatively small country, that we do so well on the world stage, and we're not afraid to have a go. Uh, even if we're up against, and I love those those quality and those attributes of Australian leadership. So, Tim, what do Australians want of their leaders these days? Well, I think people uh, have a thirst for authenticity. People want to know um, that people are trustworthy and honest, and and they seem like qualities that should be all the time. But in a in a fast paced environment, in media twenty four hour, um, seven days a week news cycle. We see people, our elected officials, our representatives becoming more desensitised and, uh, and sometimes what they're saying uh, isn't like the conversations that we have day to day. They want them to be real and legitimate and really appeal to their concerns, their needs and what they care about. And, uh, and really being honest and, and, and sometimes putting your hand up and saying we didn't get something right, sometimes acknowledging that, you know, that we need to take a different direction is actually endearing uh, and to put your hand up and say that we've got to do more work or do something better rather than always trying to evade, always trying to uh, the double speak in politics or in media that you hear, that's not authentic and not legitimate. So people are wanting that and, and people you know, are cynical, they are, they are sceptical of, uh, of people in, in leadership positions uh, where, they're not, where they're not legitimate and, and authentic and so that's what I think every, every leader should try to do is think about what drives them and what are, what are they passionate about and show people why they, they you know, might undertake the decision making that they do, the passions and values that drive them and show them how they've come to a decision or why they're taking a particular journey. And I think that's what we need in Australian leadership uh, is, and, uh, and some of those things that people look for, uh, why have you made that decision making and what are the values that drive you to that, that decision and be legitimate and honest with people. Tim, I mean, one of the great benefits of being a member of Parliament is you see many local stories of leadership at the community level. Um, would you like to share any of those stories with us? 
Uh, absolutely. One, one that stands out for me and something that we've worked on uh, locally is a specialist development school in our area called Yarrabah School. A school 20 years ago that had 19 students uh, that has now expanded to nearly 300. And for years uh, they, were, they were looking for funding, they were looking for that much needed support. And recently uh, the community rallied together to campaign to rebuild this entire school and put that forward. And leaders like Matthew Harris, who's the principal of that school, and their, and their community came together to show the wider community that this was such a, a needed project. As a local member of parliament, you have that ability to see so many different people with wonderful stories. And that really touched me and stuck with me. You know, this school was fun, fundraising, their community fundraisers were to put ramps into their classrooms. And it might be a very local example, but this is powerful for some of those families in, the, in this community. And so to announce that, they were go, that we were going to rebuild that school with a $20 million investment, uh, 20 years of, of growth, more students coming into this area to support those families. Uh, it was an absolute privilege to be with them and see the leadership in that school to demonstrate that need to support these families. How they came together to make that uh, happen was truly inspiring and to see the journey now and, and recently the Premier uh, Daniel Andrews stopped by for a visit to see that passion and energy. It's infectious and you want to be a part of that and those local leadership examples are just something very special. So Tim, thinking about yourself, you, you become a member of parliament, um, you know, you're very socially active, you're um, philosophically well attuned, um, you think a lot about the issues. Can you tell us about um, the leadership influences in your life and your journey? Yeah, well, one of, um, one of the most significant influences on my uh, early, early leadership uh, was my mother. So for uh, significant part of our life my mum was a single mum she raised my my sister and I and she always taught me to really uh, think about how you can benefit the wider community and uh, support people around you uh, to be involved in decision making um, not to complain about different outcomes but to be part of the process and that always really stuck with me uh, she was a big influence on 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 me in that front uh, but and I think on my journey through into politics and being the youngest member of the government, uh, growing up watching leaders like Steve Brax, who really did some wonderful things in education reform and really driving our state's economy for, for so long, I saw someone who unified people, brought people together, had the admiration of many Victorians, and, and people still say and reflect on how, regardless of party politics, that was someone who led our state very well. And so unifying people together, coming together and acknowledging good ideas and collaborating. And that's something that we need in leadership and that's what we look for locally as well. I always say that in our area, being a marginal electorate as well and being one of the youngest MPs is to bring people together and that only, only you know 40% of people might give you a first preference in voting, but you've got to bring your community together in decision making and you've got to unify people. And that's our mission, is to empower our community and that goes back to when I was quite young and, and mum used to talk to me about you know, being part of decision making and that process. So that sticks out for me. Some of that unification that, that Steve Brax did um, goes back to and has stuck with me all the way through uh, into being a member of parliament today. And that's a big thank you to Tim Richardson uh, from the Australian Leadership Project and all of us and we wish him the best. Uh, if you'd like to read more stories of Australian leadership or share your own, please join us at our website, www.australianleadership.com. Have a great day.